All right. So it's like uh, after one in the morning, I can't sleep as usual. So what's better to do but to do an eBay unboxing. And so I got this and uh, the seller had a make an offer button and he had a price of it was like ten dollars auction make an offer and so i oh, i'm i'm a cheap bastard excuse me well not really not a cheap bastard i'm just looking for like a bargain and sometimes i take a chance and i uh see if a seller is willing to take a low bull offer and he did um i offered him what was it what did i offer him eight bucks yeah i offered him eight bucks thinking there's no way you know what I mean? He's not going to take eight bucks for this, but he really didn't know what this was. So, you know, he just thought these like were vintage glasses and yeah, he let me have them. So with all said and done with the shipping and the tax, it cost me like $16 and change. And I was like really pleased with it. Now, do I need another pair of these? The answer is no. I have about, I'd say I'm guessing I'm guesstimating. I have at least 25 to at least 30 pairs of antique opera glasses. And I really don't need opera glasses because I don't go to the opera. And what am I going to do? Maybe I could spy on my neighbors. I don't know. Be one of those weirdos. <laughs> and then like I'll get like a little ladder and then um, just spy on everybody because I'm nosy anyway. Nah, I'm only kidding. These things probably wouldn't even work good for that. And uh, yeah, these were like a top innovation back in the... Uh, 1800s and why won't you open okay there we go oh great okay i'm not mad at the seller for this he did the shredded uh paper thing good for him you know what i mean that's using innovation that's using brains it's saving money from buying you know packing peanuts or stuffing it with special paper you have to buy all right you did good dude you did good but now we have a mess we have a nest okay so let me take the bird's nest out and Okay, I wonder what he shredded. Let's uh do some kind of CIA thing. <laughs> let's do some some kind of like, let's see. Um put these things. Oh, look, I can actually put these things together. It looks like a legal document. <laughs> oh, forget it. All right, I'm not gonna look. And yeah, imagine imagine being so freaking bored like I am every single day of my life and putting every one of these pieces of paper together like a puzzle. You know how some people like to do jigsaw puzzles? or build Legos. Like, I wonder if I could take on the challenge, but nah. All right, forget that. And let's see. Let's see what we got here. All right, so these came with the original case, which is quite impressive. Um, nine times out of 10, original case is gone. And yeah, these are gonna need a scissor. And yeah, they go missing, they just disintegrate. So it's like really cool to find something dated between the 18, 80s i'd say to the late 1890s um with the original case now in the picture i couldn't really see too much what kind of condition these were in so for eight dollars i took a chance um okay it's a little smashed but um this is an original french lemire i don't know if you could see that that logo can we let's zoom in um like it's like one of their little logos sometimes they had a bumblebee logo it has a little handle on top i won't pull it because it's so old that it'll pro uh, probably disintegrate. As you can see here, it's already disintegrating. So let's get it open. We're going to go down the Google rabbit hole. We're going to find out uh, more about the makers um, of these glasses. Because there's two. There's um, the producer, the pr uh, factory that produced these. And the name on the lenses. That um, these were made uh, by another company, but made for another company, if you know what I mean. We're going to find out how much these cost and about the time frame that these were made. And we're just going to look up interesting stuff about antique opera glasses. So already these are actually quite cool. Um, and the case is quite cool. We had the original velvet, really, really quite nice. Um, generally, these are really worn. Um, these actually, let me just get this out of the way. These actually are quite nice. Look at that actually really no paint wear at all nine times out of ten you'll see like scratches and paint wear and wow okay these are a beaut let's look in better light all right so as you can see i have another pair here so you can see they made different kinds they made um ones out of leather they made ones out of aluminum ceramic porcelain enamel they also made them out of bone or mother um yeah mother of pearl like these over here um they made them out of ivory and uh 
yeah, these are actually my favorite so far of the week. <laughs> I just uh, scored these uh, just the other day on eBay for 26 bucks. Well, with the shipping, it ended up costing me 41.28. But who's complaining, right? These are French. These are from like the 1890s. They had the telescoping handle. And uh, these are just awesome. Okay, so a pair like these are not worth anywhere near a pair like these. Um, it's a no-brainer. You see how much fancier these are. These are more plain. But I found out something tonight. I found out how expensive these type of plain ones really were. And we'll go over that in a minute. Okay, original case. And here, original beaded case. And so you can see different types of cases that uh, would have contained these opera glasses in. And so what we have here is Lemire. And uh, I don't know if you can see right on here. Well, you see E.E. E. Bausch and Son Company. And then I think on this side, it says Lemire. Do we even see that? I am so blind right now, I cannot even see. Hold on one second. Guess what, guys? I was absolutely wrong. This is actually cooler than I thought. Okay, so if you look close, I don't know if you could see that. Um, e. E. Bausch and Son Company, Rochester. And this um, pair that I bought came from a place called Perry, New York, which I believe is not far from Rochester. And do you recognize that last name, Bausch? Does Bausch and Laum ring a bell to you? Well, wait, focus, focus, enhance, hold on. Um, does Bausch and, and Laum ring a bell to you? Yes, it does. Most likely 90% of you will have heard of Bausch and Laum. And so they made like until today, even like contact lenses and all kinds of lenser, uh, lenses, which is very, very cool. And so we have like Moroccan leather. So these are called Morocco leather opera glasses. And most likely these weren't your fanciest, most expensive pair. These were, um, more actually even for gentlemen, um, Women use them as well, um, but a woman would really go for like one of these as opposed to a pair like these. But that's not to say a woman wouldn't have these. Probably a lower middle um, class or a middle class uh, woman would probably have a plain pair like these as opposed to these. <laughs> these were for your uh, highfalutin um, rich people. Okay, so we're going to look at this and let's see if this works. It has a little wheel. Do you see that? Okay, so when you turn the little wheel, these little tubes are supposed to go up and down to help you focus, which is really quite, uh, quite cool. And um, you really don't get that much magnification uh, from these. These were used to see people on, on the stage um, in the theater uh, from far away. So if you had nosebleed seats, um, you would probably want to get these. But also they were used for spying. So a lot of women would actually not only look at the people on the stage, they'd actually use these to spy on like who's coming into the opera hall, who's coming into the concert hall, who's showing up, what lady is wearing what, what is the latest fashions, uh, what guy is holding the hand of another woman. Uh, so, you know, like it was like gossip glasses, which is quite cool. Let's uh, check out how the bottoms of this looks. Now, I always like to keep them closed up for storage purposes because they won't fit in the bag if you don't like unextend them. All right. So if you look again, we have leather. It does have some wear. It's because, um, you know, someone held with their fingertips and the finger oils eventually like wore parts of the leather away. Quite common. And again, here we go. Look, these are in actually really phenomenal shape. Let's find out what a pair like these would have sold for. Now these were probably made my guess and we're going to do a little research on E.E. E. Um, Bausch um, to try to find out more about like how old these are. And uh, we'll find out about the time frame these were made, which is my guess between the 18, probably the 1890s to about the early 1900s, probably about 1900 to about maybe 1910. So let's go ahead, go down the uh, Google rabbit hole and check this stuff out. Okay, so John Jacob Bausch had a son. Well, he had, uh, I think, a few sons. Um, one of his sons um, being E.E. E. Bausch, like we saw on the lens. Um, his son eventually did take over the company. But um, he started in 1850, I believe. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, he 
opened a retail optical shop in 1853 in Rochester, New York. He sold spectacles, thermometers, field glasses, magnifiers, and opera glasses. Um, so that actually helps me to date this. So between 1853 and all the way through, yeah, in 1876, he um, actually uh, changed the name to Bausch & Lomb Optical Company. Now, Lom was a friend of his. And basically, Lom is a friend that, like, gave money, you know what I mean, to help him. Because, actually, Bausch didn't have enough money to continue his business. It was growing, and he couldn't um, actually get enough product on the shelves because it was flying off the shelves. Because he came up with a really ingenious pair of spectacles that, um, generally, spectacles were made out of actually like precious metals like silver and gold well he came up with ones made out of some kind of vulcanized rubber which were very inexpensive right around the civil war time and so what happened is they flew off the shelves and he needed to borrow money for more capital lom loaned him the money and he was a young guy younger than uh john jacob bausch and he loaned him the money and bausch told him if the company takes off i will actually make you a partner one day and so it took a while before he made him a partner. So it's uh, quite interesting. So trying to date that um, that pair of glasses is a little hard. Um, again, in 1876, um, he had named it Bausch and Lom Optical Company, manufacturing microscopes. Um, and uh, they went all the way up and incorporated as Bausch and Lom Optical Company in 1908. So you know the glasses are pri uh, prior to 1908. Um, binoculars and telescopes actually were made in 1893. Okay, so we can actually date these to about 1893. And he had spectacles, microtones in 1890, um, photographic lenses in 1883. Um, very interesting. So there you go. Now you'll learn a little something. Okay, so I found a 1907 catalog uh, for opera glasses. So let's check it out. Um, and what did we notice? Okay, so we have Mother of Pearl up here and mother of pearl up here and we have black moroccan leather ones down here so what would a pair like this go for in about 1907 let's check it out they had different ones you could choose for uh from you could choose from a brand by the name of lemire um another one by leclerc or chevalier and all these uh companies were french now the bausch ones were probably possibly american if not Lemire probably made them for Bausch. Um, that sometimes happened. Um, before Bausch actually started creating his own lenses, he got a lot of them from France. So, okay, what did they sell for? Okay, so here's an, uh, the name, what they called it. Extra quality Morocco leather covered opera glasses. And so if you look, the actually... The Lemire ones were actually the most expensive out of all these three brands here being sold. Um, the Lemire, let's see, the cheapest ones that they had were $11.20, which uh, equals to today's money of $339.55. Now, um, their middle grade ones were $380.30. And by grade, it depended on how many lenses they had um, inside the opera glasses. So the more lenses, the more magnification and the better. So the middle grade ones were selling for about, uh, $380 and 30 cents. And the most expensive Moroccan leather ones were selling for $490 and 47 cents. Now, what was a lesser brand selling for? So the Leclerc ones is the next best. And the cheapest was $182.60. The mid grade was between $203 and $73 in today's money to $220.33 and the highest being $274.66. Now we have the third brand, which would be Chevalier. And I have a lot of opera glasses made by Chevalier. And I didn't know it was considered the off brand or the cheap one. Now they had two different kinds to choose from. They had one that was non-achromatic or achromatic. Now, the non-achromatic were actually, um, I believe, less money. Um, yes, they were, because it was not corrected for color distortion. So basically, you would see like colors or rainbow type of um, distortion 
around the edges of the lens when you looked in them. So the non-acronomic ones, you would see the, the distortions. So they weren't the best. Okay, so for the cheaper ones made by Chevalier, it would be called their medium quality ones, by the way. It would be $126.77. Uh, for their um, non, um, actually, let's check it out. Yeah, the non-acromatics would be, let's see, um, going through my, my list here, that would be, I'm trying to check it out, $114.69 in today's money. Um, the most expensive ones made by Chevalier here would be $169.02. So you get an idea now. Now I'm going to show you something really insane. Okay, so in 1907, $1 was equal to... $30.18. Isn't that cre uh, crazy? Now, the mother of pearl ones were the most um, expensive, but the cheapest mother of pearl ones were $23 by Lemire. And uh, actually, no, I'm wrong. By a company by the name of Ball uh, Balland in France. And the cheapest ones would have been $13.30. So let's go into the Wayback Machine. And let's see what $13.30 would have been in 1907. Let's see. And here we go. That would have been $401.43. Oh, my God. That's insane. All right. Let's go back again. And, okay, so for the cheapest pair of, let's see, Lemire Mother of Pearl Opera Glasses would have been, it looks like it's saying $23.00. Um, let's check it out. And that would be in today's money. And that's the cheapest pair. What did I say? 2330. Okay, here we go. That would be, and again, the cheapest $703.25 for the cheapest ones. Okay, so now you get to see the mother of pearl ones who are like the ones I just showed you um, with the arm that stretches out. It's called the lorgnette handle. Um, those ones were even more than the ones without the lorgnette handle. So as you can tell, these things were quite pricey. So tonight we went in the Wayback Machine. We found out that $1 in 1907, now I'm guessing 1907 because it was an ad I found dated 1907. But previous to that, these would have been even more money. Um, the earlier the time, the more inflation and the higher the value of the dollar was. So, for example, in 1895, $1 was worth $35 as opposed to $30.18 in 1907. So these would have been even more money. Um, you can imagine a couple of hundred dollars uh, for a pair like these. Um, so you could tell that anyone who bought them did uh, not have a problem affording them. Um, these were not cheap, even though middle-class people probably did buy them. They probably put them on layaway and, uh, gave them away as Christmas presents to family and friends who adored the theater, uh, theater. Let's take a quick zoom in and look at the markings on there. You see Rochester and again, E, E, Bausch and Son Company, Rochester, New York. And again, the same thing. Now I'm looking to see if there's any other interesting, uh, parts of this but no so we got the original case my guess these are made anywhere between the 1880s to about 1900 um even without the laum name on it um laum actually when he merged with um bausch uh created a different division so both of them were partners but one handled one thing and laum handled the other so maybe that's why Laum's name is not on the opera glasses. But you might have learned something. We did a little history. We did a little research. We found out the values of these things back then. And the craziest part of all is if these were like $300 back then, and I only paid with shipping and tax $16 for them, that is uh, really a good bargain, <laughs> right? And again, here's the uh, really uh, well you know, heel tourist um, type of glasses. Like if you were like, say, a tourist at a seaside and they had like some kind of um, theater operations going on or some kind of traveling vaudeville or opera, um, a well-heeled, uh, heeled, uh, like wealthy, like woman would have purchased a pair like these at a jewelry shop, an exclusive department store, and made sure that she was seen by everybody as having the most fanciest, the most beautiful 
opera glasses as opposed to a plain pair like these back in the um victoria late victorian mid victorian and early 20th century if a woman was caught with no opera glasses at the opera a lot of times she wouldn't even be admitted um you were like looked down upon but if she showed up she had to have the fanciest ones otherwise tails um not tails but mouths would wag if you know what i mean other women would look down on her um, and know that she was not one of the elite and did not belong. So there you go. Hope you learned something. These were a great buy for only um, $16 and change. Let me just uh, close this case here, the original case. Um, it's amazing, again, to have the original case for this. And there you go. All right, another pair I didn't need. <laughs> so long.